Hey everyone, this is Tony, Tainted Lord A7, and here's another collection update for everyone's enjoyment. As usual, it's a mixed bag of uh, genres under the walk metal category, but overall I'm really satisfied with what I picked up, and there may be one band in here that I'll have people being turned off by, but we'll get to that when we get to that. For now, the first band that I'm going to show off is actually the t-shirt that I'm wearing. And if you recognize this, you will know what band I'm going to show off. Obviously, is the Deftones and the album Around the Fall. Now when it comes to the Deftones, I am mostly a fan of the um, late 90s to mid 90s stuff. Because that's what the that's the Deftones that I grew up listening to, enjoying, and and most memorable for me growing up as a preteen. Like to me, Around the Fall, the soft title, and White Pony is all I need from the Deftones. And yeah, I I don't think this band needs any introduction. If you're into like some alternative rock metal. Um, Deftones, Around the Fall, and the band overall, it's just a really great band, and I really enjoy them, you know? I didn't enjoy them now, lately, than I was as a kid, because as a kid, I thought they were all right, but as I grow older and, and I mature a lot, I've grown to appreciate the music a lot more. Though I'm not really, a, really that big on the later stuff. Like I said, I'm more. I grew up listening to the Deftones during the uh, late '90s to mid 2000s ish. So that's the Deftones that I I resonate more. But yeah, I'm really glad to pick up Deftones around the fall. Now it can be like very melodic, aggressive, and definitely borderline on some serious metal style riffing. So yeah, really glad to pick up Deftones around the fall. Next up is Airstorm's Seventh Worm of a Seventh Worm. Airstorm is just a really, really fun party pirate metal band that clearly have an unhealthy obsession of being pirates. But it's a fun one. And like I said, they're just a band that doesn't take themselves too seriously and just, and just know how to have a good time. If you're into some really solid heavy metal, uh, power metal with some folk metal elements, I think Airstorm are a band to check out. And 7th Worm of a 7th Worm is just another great album in their discography. Like I said, if you're into heavy metal, power metal with a little bit of folk metal thrown in, Definitely a band to check out, and this album is a great one. Really glad to have this in my collection, so yeah. Airstorm, 7th Worm of a 7th Worm. Great album. Next up is a band that I've always known about, but I didn't really delve that deep into this band. And this band um, has has like a lot of, um, uh, how should I say it, have a lot of mixed reviews, like some people like them, some people don't. For me, I'm kind of in the middle. I like them, but I don't love them. But this album from this band really kicks ass. And that's Whitechapel in the album This Is Exile. This Is Exile. Yeah, This Is Exile by Whitechapel. And it's Pure boss the wall death call through and through. It's heavy, it's riffy, it has some really guttural vocals, and it's like really brutal. But it's not the kind of death call where it gets monotone and boring. There's actually some flair in the style of death call on this album. At least for me. To me, this album just clicked with me. This is the kind of death call that I really enjoy. And, and I don't know why I never checked out Whitechapel's early discography. The only one I got from them is the 2019 album, The Valley. 
which is which is a great album. But I definitely need to check out check out and go more deeper into Whitechapel's discography because this is Exile by Whitechapel is a great great example of how to do Death Call right, in my opinion. So yeah, really glad to pick up Whitechapel's This Is Exile. A heavy, brutal, riff driven riff driven album through and through. Okay, the next band is uh, it's a really, really famous band in the early '90s hardcore scene, you know. And I don't think this band needs any introduction if you're into the whole early '90s hardcore scene. And that's Agnostic Front and the album One Voice. Now, Agnostic Front is a band, or a band. Agnostic Front are a band that I've always known about, I've always heard about them, but then we really dive deep into their music because I'm not that familiar with the hardcore scene and I'm and I don't really listen to that much hardcore. But this one, One Voice, is just a classic in the discography. You know? Like I said, it's just early 90s hardcore, but it's really good. It's short straight to post it's short straight to the point and and like i said it's short because most of these songs are not that long but yeah it's just a classic 90s hardcore album from agnostic fun you know it's brutal it's it has the riffs that i, I enjoy and yeah yeah i guess uh, I guess I just wanted to dive more into Agnostic Front because I don't own anything from them, but really glad to pick up this classic from Agnostic Front. So, yeah, One Voice by Yeah, One Voice by Agnostic Front. Just a classic 90s early 90s hardcore album that I'm glad to pick up, you know? And, you know, let's move on. Okay, the next CD is another classic album from a band that I've really, really enjoy uh, from time to time, and that's Faith No More, Introduce Yourself. Yeah, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure anyone who's into rock, metal, knows who Faith No More are, and Introduce Yourself is just a just an excellent heavy metal Alternative rock, alternative metal, you name it. It's just a great album. You know, a lot of good songs, a lot of good riffs, solos. And and I forgot what's the uh the singer's name on this album, but his singing style is very unique and I and really does fit the with the music, you know? So yeah, I, I like Faith No More, but I never Never had this album until now, so I'm really glad to pick this one up. Introduce Yourself by Faith No More. It's just a classic album from them from the late late 80s. Yeah, this came out back in 1987, so... Yeah, a classic album from the late 80s from Faith No More. So, yeah, if you're into heavy metal, some alternative rock, alternative metal, or good... Good music in general, then definitely recommend Faith No More. Introduce yourself. Really good album. Really excellent album. Really glad to have it. And now the band that I said would probably make people cringe, like I said earlier. And honestly, the band that I actually grew up listening to as a kid, you know? They were like one of the first rock bands that I was introduced to. And why I don't listen to them that much. Yeah, even though I don't listen to them that much. After finding out that they're going to be splitting up soon. I figured I might as well pick up the, the newest last final album. And the uh, predecessor for that album. And the new one from Sun 41. Yeah, basically, some 41. Yeah, yeah, I can totally see people cringing, but 
Yeah, Sum 41 has a special place in my heart. You know, they're like one of the first rock bands I I was introduced to as a kid, so so yeah, just wanted to pick up their last final newest album from them before they split up and and the uh, and the album's called Heaven and Hell. Yeah, Heaven and Hell by Sum 41. Um to me it um, this is a double album where the first one, the Heaven side, is more of the pop punk influences, while the Hell uh, side is the more heavy metal driven songs. And seeing that this is the last album before they split up, I think they went out with a bang. You know, like the uh, Heaven side of the of this double album really reminded me. Of the early stuff when I first when I first heard about them, you know, and yeah, the first this is like a standard pop punk, but done really well in my opinion. While the second one, the second this hell, is just some straight up heavy metal that's surprisingly good, and surprisingly well done. I think as a last final album from them, some forty ones hell heaven and. Let me start again. As the last final album from this band, Sum 41's Heaven Hell is just a great album and a great last gift to the dedicated fans in my opinion. So yeah. So yeah. Sum 41 might not, you know, win all the true metaheads, but to me I I have a soft spot for them, so yeah, I'm really glad to pick up some 41's Heaven and Hell. And the last CD that I'm going to show off for this collection update is some 41's predecessor, um, Order in Decline. Yeah, this is this was like the second last album before Heaven and Hell and. And Order and Decline is just a solid, solid album. A great mix of pop punk, some surprisingly heavy metal moments, and it's just a great album. Not really much more to say except if you're a fan of Sum 41, pop punk, and a bit of heavy metal thrown in, I'll say this is a great album. Really glad to pick this, al pick this album up, so... Yeah, Order and Decline by Sum 41. Just a really excellent album in my opinion. And that's it everyone. That's my short little collection update. Didn't want to drag this video too long. So that's why I was trying to speed it up a little bit. But hopefully everyone enjoyed it. Hopefully Sum 41 didn't make anyone cringe. And hopefully everyone enjoyed it. All the rest of the CDs I picked up. So, so yeah. Thanks for watching and have a good day, night, afternoon, wherever you are. Goodbye for now.